The train arrived on time. I was in one of the third class carriages, but don't be scared about that because there's fans in there. There's a lot of through breeze coming from the open windows and there's some great sights to see when you look out of those windows. And for 15 baht, that's gotta be a bargain. You can see here there's a tourist map in English that you can use as your guide for places to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's about nine or ten temples on there. So no shortage of temples, particularly if you're coming with your Thai friend, they're going to appreciate that. And I've just got time to visit two or three. So the original station here was built in 1921 and it was built in a kind of neoclassical design. There's a lot of Italian influences around this area in terms of architecture and it has been beautifully preserved and it really is just worth visiting to come to in itself, let alone explore the rest of Ayutthaya. Here you've got a restaurant, you've got a coffee shop, you've got some toilets, and you've also got a lot of trains coming in and out. All of the trains go into the northeast or from the northeast, and the north come through here. They all stop here, and there's over 70 a day stop here. We're only about 71 kilometers from Bangkok, but this is a big important station still. Ayutthaya at one point was thought to be the biggest city in the world and it's still an important stop-off point in Thailand today. So this is one of the main hub stations now in Thailand. It's beautifully preserved. You don't have a big wait for a train here because <coughs> there's a train every few minutes. It's actually not in the center of Ayutthaya, so you do need to walk into the center if you choose to do that. Or well, of course there's taxis and tuk-tuks outside. Now, I'm a big fan of the train guide produced by the blogger Richard Barrow, and I'll give a link to all of his material down below because it's absolutely fantastic. Whenever you're planning a trip on a train in Thailand, that's the go-to place to go. And some of the things that I read from his site are things that I'll use today. So I'm guessing just over my shoulder is the lane that takes me down to the river as advised by Richard Barrow. Go down that lane and I'm hoping to find some tuk-tuks down there that will tour me around Ayutthaya for a few hours. Weather's looking a bit ominous. You can see that you've got motorbikes to hire and also pedal bikes to hire. 60 baht a day for a pedal bike. The hours. Okay. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I allow it? How do I allow it? Okay. 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 They said normal price is 300 baht, but special price just for me, 200 baht an hour to go around some of the sites, which are mainly temples. That tour is going to take about three hours. Three hours, 200 baht an hour. Doesn't matter how many people is 600 baht. Yeah, I'm good at maths, dear oh dear. And I mean, a very cute little tuk-tuk that's gonna take me around. I mean, if you're in Bangkok or if you're on a vacation in Thailand and you wanna do a little bit something different, it's a very popular place for Westerners to come a day out in Ayutthaya. I'll see something a little bit more realistic about Thailand, perhaps than some of the absolutely tourist places. Just going across the railway now. It's part of Thai history. It's an important city in Thailand. And actually, I've been here for how many years? A lot. But I've never been around the temples of Ayutthaya and three hours is gonna cost me 600 baht. No complaints. So ticket is 20 baht, admission fees for foreigner. Oh, and admission for foreigner is 20 baht. Con Thai is free. So my first stop is Wat Yai Chai Mong Kon. These structures date all the way back to 1357. And first of all, it was the site of a monastery, according to records. So 
So this great structure here was built just before the year 1600. So this is the enclosure which houses the main jetty or stupa behind me and apparently it was completely walled in and originally had a roof over it as well and it's surrounded by these Buddha images. So let's walk up the stairs. I don't know this was built in the late 1500s but why they didn't build an escalator at the same time I'm not exactly sure. So the Chedi was commissioned by King Narasuen the Great and that was as a memorial for his victory over the then King of Burma. Upstairs you'll find some more Buddha figures and like a well in the middle that people drop coins down into for good luck. Then it's only a matter of going downstairs. It's a lot easier on the way down than it was on the way up and some stunning views to be had as well. my ticket here and depend how you feel about dual pricing double pricing I'm not really a fan of it I have to say 10 baht for a Thai person to get in 50 baht for a foreigner to get in doesn't matter if you've got a driving license a work permit a visa just the fact that you don't come from Thailand means you got to pay five times as much on the other hand you've only got to pay 50 baht depends which way you look at it <laughs> So the fall of Ayutthaya, 1767, the monastery was apparently set on fire in a Burmese attack and there's only the symmetrical base and staircase remaining. At least that's what it says on the very helpful English information. Behind me is a Buddha head image. You might be able to see it. And it's a bit of a miracle that it's growing up like that because it fell from a pedestal a long time ago and it was trapped in the roots of the tree apparently and the roots have lifted it up and now it's growing towards the sky. It's a miracle. I mean there must have been a few bricks and a lot of cement used and the quality of the work they've done is not dissimilar to the people who built my condo. It's absolutely huge if you can see somebody in front of the Buddha image there. And the other advantage with visiting this site, it's free even to those foreigners who visit. And you probably saw en route to this third site that there's elephants giving rides around the place. There's also a floating market here. They're often pushed by the tuk-tuk drivers as places to visit. For me, a floating market for tourists and elephants made to carry tourists around the streets for money. It's not really my cup of tea. I'm not saying you won't enjoy it, but it's just not the sort of thing that I choose to do. So I've skipped on those. Thai, Thai, Thai. And you? My Thailand, Thailand. 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 Suratani. Suratani. I know Suratani. Rat Thai Fa Suratani. Yeah, it's good. Tamai Martini, Kap. Matiel. Matiel. 
You, you're a tourist like me. Okay, good luck to you. Chuck D cap. Okay, bye bye. Have a good trip, and I did have a good trip, but sadly my time is coming to an end, and I'm back at the railway station to get the train back to Bangkok. Okay, good driver. Cap D D cap. That is my day out in Ayutthaya and I do hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. It's something a little bit different. It's something that gives you some historical perspectives, some feeling of traditional Thailand. And it's lovely to get out from the tourist areas just for one day. If you have enjoyed this video, it does help if you give it a like and subscribe. And I'll be back with another video very, very soon, but for me, standing in the middle of the rails on a UTR station. Don't think the train's got, oh dear. Better go now. Bye bye. See you next time.